Dr. Sophia Satterwhite, founder and CEO of She Heals the World. I'm so happy that you are tuning in to today's episode to hear the top lifestyle and business tips from women entrepreneurs all around the globe. If you found this show helpful, be sure to share it with a friend. That's how our community grows. Today's guest is coming up next. Erin, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I'd love to dig into your business. Can you tell us exactly what you do and how you got started with this work? So pretty much I started on Instagram. I'm considered a health and wellness influencer. Um, I use my Instagram and my um, website to just, you know, promote a healthy lifestyle. I share recipes and meal ideas and just overall positivity around um, food and creating a healthy relationship with food. Um, I really got into it basically from my past. About 2015, I was admitted to an inpatient treatment center for an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And I spent six weeks there and, you know, those six weeks really changed my life. It um, helped me create a healthy relationship with food and helped me realize, you know, food is fuel and I'm more than just, you know, a body and kind of figuring out my self-worth. And that's really what sparked my passion to, you know, start this Instagram and start my website and, you know, just kind of help other people one, not have to go through what I went through, and two, be able to live these healthy, sustainable lifestyles and be able to live their best life, really. Wow. And so at what point did it kind of turn into your actual business? Um, I think the further along I got with recovery and, um, you know, doing it for an extended period of time, I was creating this healthy relationship with food and also reaching others who were struggling with the same thing or, you know, going through some sort of disordered eating. And it just, I, I, it just like blew up. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I started working with brands and I started going to expos and, you know, I just had people coming to me asking for advice and inspiration. And I was like, this is, I went through everything that I went through to do this. You know, I want to be able to help people and use my story to better people and give them hope that it, um, you know, recovery is possible and you are able to live this lifestyle. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it happened. Yeah, yeah. And so now that you move from like launching to sustaining, because how many years have you been doing the blog by now? Um, I believe it's been about four years. Okay, four years. So now that it's like kind of smooth sailing and cruising along, like what business hurdles have you experienced as you've been running the community? Yeah, um, so I am a full time student. So I've, I've been in school for I think this is seven or eight years. I don't know, I, I honestly lost track. But um, <laughs> being able to balance, you know, business and um, my schooling has definitely been a challenge. And, you know, there's some times where I get caught up in the Instagram and, you know, scrolling through my feed and it, it can be toxic at times. So being able to balance that has been a hurdle and it's still one that I struggle with today. Um, but that's that's probably been like the biggest hurdle so mm -hmm. far. Yeah. Well, I cannot wait to tap into your genius and your brilliance <laughs> with everything that you are posting on Instagram as it relates to COVID and quarantine and meal prepping and meal planning. I mean, I don't even know where to start. So yeah. I would love for you to kind of just give us some of your biggest tips as it relates to meal planning and prepping during this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely been a struggle, I think, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm honestly still trying to figure it out. I'm just a adjusting and trying to get back into, you know, a routine. Um, but I think one of the biggest um, tips that I can give is just getting into a routine. You know, this whole virus COVID-19 thing kind of just threw us all off. You know, we all have our, our daily routines. You know, we get up, eat breakfast, I don't know, go to school, go to work. It's just, you know, every day is kind of the same. And once that's thrown off, everything gets thrown off. We're all kind of out of whack and out of balance. So I think the biggest thing is to, you know, establish a schedule. 
So if that's like a meal schedule, either like breakfast and then you do some work and then you have lunch, just kind of trying to eat around the same times, I think is super beneficial just to get us back in the habit of regular life. Mm. Um, And I think, um, you know, if you're like me, you want all the comfort food right now. That's just, (laughs) that's how it is. You know, we're all stressed and we're all overwhelmed and, you know, comfort food is what we reach to. And I'm all for having, you know, comfort food every once in a while. We do pizza Fridays every, every Friday around here. So Mm -hmm. I'm totally for that. But, um, having majority of our meals being those balanced meals, having the protein and a carb and a fat, just so we are staying satisfied and fueling our bodies with proper nutrients. Um, I think a lot of people during this time, since, a lot of us aren't as active as we were. They feel the need that they shouldn't be eating as much as, you know, they regularly would. And it, it plays this whole mind game with you where, you know, if I'm not exercising, then I don't need to eat when in reality, you know, we still need to be fueling our bodies. We still need to be, you know, giving ourselves those nutrients. So making sure we're eating these balanced and whole, um, wholesome meals is really important as well. Do you have any grocery shopping hacks? Because (laughs) grocery shopping has been an absolute nightmare for me. I'm sure it's a nightmare for a lot of people. What are you doing to to make grocery shopping easier? So, you know, first things first, when I know that I'm going grocery shopping, I, I make a list. I'm a huge list person. I checking things off is like a little joy in my life that just gives me a high. So, you know, going into a grocery store with a plan, you know, planning out my week, what I'm going to eat for dinner, you know, snacks and everything, just kind of planning things out. Sometimes I like to print out like a blank calendar and fill out my meals through there and then make my shopping list based off that. So going in with a plan kind of helps you stay on track and helps you not reach for those Oreos or those little snacks here and there. Um, But also another fun little tip is if you stay on the perimeter of the grocery store, that's where you're going to find all your vegetables, your fruits, your lean meats, more of your whole ingredients. And it's, it's right when you get into those middle aisles that you have all the candy and the sweets and the sugar. So yeah. making majority of your shopping trip along the outside of the perimeter is going to help us stay on track as well, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I totally try to do that. I'm never successful. <laughs> I walk in with an intention to say, yes, this is perimeter. Do not even do the cookie aisle. <laughs> But, you know, what are you going to do? Sometimes you deserve a little cheat. (laughs) I am all for that. It's all about balance, moderation, you know, all that stuff. Yes, yes. So with fruits and vegetables, are you still, like, eating, like, um, regular salads? Even though, you know, people I feel like have had so much paranoia around fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. Are you still finding it okay to eat? Or are you, like, subbing those out with different powders and and kind of other uh, canned or, or packaged goods? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not super paranoid about that. I still, okay. I'm like team fresh food all the way. Yeah. Um, so I, I eat fresh fruits and vegetables and salads, all that kind of stuff. I do love frozen fruits and vegetables though, because I know sometimes, or at least at the beginning of the quarantine, there was no produce like you know the grocery stores were just blank so you know having those frozen options I are really really great as well um you're still getting the nutrients you're still getting all that all that good stuff and it lasts longer because you can just put it in the freezer Mm -hmm. um so I've been having those on hand I have fresh fruits and vegetables all over my house oh nice yeah it sounds delicious. I'm like, oh, I would love to get some fresh fruit right now. I mean, I have <laughs> apples and oranges, but mm-hmm. I haven't really been getting grapes. I don't know. I got a little freaked out because I went to the grocery store and I saw this guy grab this like package of grapes and the mm-hmm. whole thing fell on the floor and it fell out and it oh, fell like no. And he just turns around and picks it back. He doesn't even tell anybody. He turns around, he picks oh it back. Oh my god! Back in the package and puts it back like nothing ever happened to it. Oh, and I fear. <laughs> that I was like okay I'm not doing great for a little while I have to have them soaking in a bowl just yeah to make sure. yeah definitely um, but I do want to start to have more fresh fruits and vegetables your body just feels so much healthier mm-hmm. 
you're kind of fueling it with fresh food. I mean, it's just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. So what about meal planning in terms of what you write down and how you actually plan? Do you have any tips? Are you like a spreadsheet kind of person? Do you just like make a quick list every week or do you have websites that you use or apps that you use to organize your meal planning? What does that look like? So I'm like, um, a person that needs to write things down. Like I love my computer. I love typing, but in order for me, even when I study like for school, I have to write everything down. So Mm -hmm. I'll print out like a blank calendar Mm -hmm. or they have, they have them online actually like these calendars with, um, like where you can put all your meals in. So it has like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then like, like your snacks. So, um, I just, I fill everything in there. I get on Pinterest. Pinterest has been my best friend during this whole quarantine. Um, you know, I get to get creative and I have my family here. So it's, it's a real family bonding experience as well. And we'll go like, usually on Sundays, we'll plan out for our week and just write things down, write the ingredients that we need. Um, and that kind of stuff, just so we know what we're doing and we're not just like going into a blind Do you have any things that you like track? So are you tracking calories? Are you not tracking calories? Are you just doing mindful eating? I'm just, I just want to give people like a good overview of how to make sure that they're getting all their nutrients in if they're not working with a dietitian or a trainer. Do you have any tips on that so that they're having a well-balanced kind of diet? Yeah. So personally, I don't track calories just with my past. It's not healthy Mm -hmm. for me to do that. Um, and, and learning about nutrition has really helped me be able to mindfully eat and intuitively eat. So eating when I'm hungry, stopping when I'm full, that kind of stuff. Um, just being really mindful of it. I try to turn off all distractions when I'm eating as well, just so I can really get in touch with what I'm eating, you know, use my senses, smelling, tasting, texture, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then my, my plates usually are, I try to stick with at least half a plate being vegetables. So whether you're baking them or broiling them, roasting them, any kind of way you want to prepare any vegetable that should be about half your plate. Um, I make sure I have a protein. So I'm a, I'm a big chicken girl. I love chicken. Um, but ground turkey or a lean beef, some eggs, some kind of protein just so we can stay satisfied and satiated um, for longer and we're helping our muscles you know, repair and recover and rebuild. Protein's pretty important for that. And then I make sure I have like a source of fat on my plate as well. So whether that be avocado or olive oil or nuts, seeds, peanut butter, anything like that. Um, And then I make sure I have a carb as well. So I love sweet potatoes. I love rice, anything like that. That's another part of my plate. So I like to just try to build a balanced plate in general. So if I'm eating, you know, whole foods and foods that are going to fuel my body, I don't feel like I need to track calories. Um, and so I just, I basically eat how my body, what my body needs. So, you know, getting enough vegetables and protein and carbs and that kind of stuff, staying away from like the more processed foods, um, and foods without nutrition labels, I think is really helpful as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think like those um, natural marshmallows at the store that I, <laughs> I know what's in them, I should probably put them down. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they slap the word organic or natural or healthy on any of these boxes and <laughs> changes everything. <laughs> everything. So true. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for all these amazing tips. Do you have any final thoughts to leave with our guests about meal prepping and planning during quarantine? Um, I think just, you know, having a plan and getting in a routine and, and being really, you know, gentle with yourself and forgiving with yourself. You know, if you do go off quote unquote track, you know, for a meal or a day or, you know, a week, like it's okay. You know, you're, you're going to be okay. And this is a time where we need to be really forgiving and really kind to ourselves and our bodies and just realize, you know, we're in a pandemic. It's not something that happens every day. And we all are stressed. We're all overwhelmed. And, you know, we're, we're all going to get through it together. Yes, we are all here together. Absolutely. If you could look back and give your 10 year younger self any piece of advice, what would it be? 
Um, it would probably just to re- be to remind myself, like, I'm worthy, you know. I, I dealt with a lot of insecurity and self-sabotaging and all that kind of stuff when I was younger. And I felt like I never was worthy of love and health and happiness and I didn't deserve it. But um, if I could go back, I would tell myself I am so worthy and I deserve everything and I should never settle for anything less. Mm, beautiful. How can our audience find and support you? Um, So the biggest way to support me is on Instagram. That's where I'm most known. So my handle is Body by Breakfast. Um, I post a lot of usually breakfast stuff, but, you know, healthy meals and recipes. I do have a website, bodybybreakfast.org, I believe it is. I don't go on there, like, super often, but um, I try to blog and, you know, share personal stuff on there. But my Instagram is probably the best way to find me. Beautiful. Erin, this has been such a joy having you on the show. <laughs> Thanks so much for making time for us. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. And as always, for more resources, as you continue to live out your beautiful mission of healing the world and grow your beautiful business, you can head to www.shehealstheworld.com forward slash freebie to see what new resources I have in store for you. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. And I can't wait to see you at the next episode.